this is radius bone this is the lateral bone of the forearm and it's a long bone like any long bone it has got three parts it has got an upper end it has got a lower end and in between it has got a shaft first of all the upper end the upper end of the radius has got three parts it has got a head it has got a neck and then it has got a roughened elevation known as the radial tuberosity located midly below the neck first of all the head the head of the radius as you can see is disc shape it has got a superior aspect or the top aspect and it has got a circumference the superior aspect or the top aspect will articulate with the capitulum of the humerus bone to form the elbow joint where we can perform flexion and extension movements The circumference, this circumference will participate in another joint. The other joint is the superior radio ulnar joint, joint between proximal parts of the radius and the ulna bone. Here it will articulate. For articulation, ulna will provide a notch. This notch is for the radius bone, so this is known as the radial notch. So, circumference of the head will articulate with, as you can see, circumference of the radial head articulates with the radial notch over the ulna to form supination and pronation. So as you can see after the head there is a prominent constriction. This constriction is known as the neck of the radial upper end. Below the neck midly we have got a roughened elevation. This roughened elevation is known as the radial tuberosity or the bicipital tuberosity. Now I come to the lower end first. Lower end of the radius bone has got five aspects. As you can see, it is quadrangular in shape. So it has five aspects. It has got a front surface. It has got a posterior surface. It has got a medial surface. It has got a lateral surface and it has got a inferior surface below. The front aspect of the radius lower end front surface is regular, is smooth. Against this surface, we palpate the radial artery. Posterior aspect, you can see posteriorly we have got larger tubercles. This is the identification of the posterior aspect of the radius lower end. The radius lower end posterior aspect has got these three to four tubercles in between the tendons of the extensor muscles will pass. Midly, mean towards ulna it has got a notch towards ulna it has got a notch known as the ulnar notch a notch for ulna here the lower end of the ulna will articulate to produce supination and pronation and this joint is inferior radio ulnar joint or distal radio ulnar joint now the lateral aspect of the radius bone laterally lower end is projected downward to form the stellite process now the inferior aspect of the radius bone inferior aspect of the radius bone has got two impression one triangular impression towards stellite side towards lateral side is for articulation with scaphite bone and one square shape impression towards the notch side medially this square shape impression is for the articulation with the lunate bone so scaphoid and lunate bone articulate with radius bone to form the wrist joint there is no participation of ulna in the wrist joint now the shaft of the radius bone the shaft of the radius bone is triangular in cut section and it has got three borders and three surfaces the borders are the medial border anterior and posterior borders the surfaces are the lateral surface anterior and posterior surface first i will trace borders and then we can easily mark the surfaces so the anterior border you can see that this is the radial tuberosity and radial tuberosity anterior margin we can trace this anterior border which is oblique in the start and then it is vertical so in the start it is oblique then it is vertical and we can trace it from the radial tuberosity anterior margin now the posterior border the posterior border is simply mirror image of the anterior border. We cannot trace this border. We will just say that is the mirror image and it's just present on the back side of the anterior border. So this is the posterior border of the radius bone. 
now we come to the medial border this medial border is very much sharp because it is going to give attachment to the interosseous membrane whose other end will be attached to the ulna bone interosseous border so the radial bone interosseous border is towards ulna and is known as the medial border and ulna will have interosseous border towards radius and that will be labeled as the lateral border of the ulna bone so for tracing the medial border or the interosseous border again this radial tuberosity will be very much helpful because from the posterior aspect of the radial tuberosity we can trace this medial border of the radius bone that will lead low down into the notch so from radial tuberosity anterior aspect until the ulna notch inferiorly now surfaces between the medial border and anterior border on the front we have got this anterior surface between the medial border and the posterior border in between we have got this posterior surface and laterally between the anterior border and the posterior border we have got this lateral surface so this is about the radius bone this is ulna bone this is a bone of the medial side of the forearm it's a long bone like any long bone it has got three parts it has got an upper end it has got a lower end and then it has got a shaft in between first of all the upper end upper end of the ulna bone has got two processes it has got two processes one process is on the top on the superior aspect this is the olecranon process and one process is on the front aspect of the ulna bone upper end that is the coronoid process these two processes on the front together form a notch that is known as the trochlear notch which articulates with the trochlea of the humerus bone again i will explain that trochlear notch will articulate with trochlea coronoid process will be accommodated inside a fossa on the front of the humerus bone during flexion so this is coronoid process this is coronoid fossa likewise olecranon process is accommodated inside the olecranon fossa of the humerus bone and it will accommodate olecranon process when we perform extension when we perform extension olecranon process will be accommodated inside the olecranon fossa of the humerus bone olecranon process has got five aspects it has got a superior aspect it has got an anterior aspect it has got a medial aspect and it has got a lateral aspect and on the back it has got a posterior aspect now i will explain the important points anterior aspect as i have already explained that it will contribute in the formation of the trochlear notch superior aspect this is the superior aspect you can see this superior aspect of the olecranon process is subcutaneous mean it can be felt beneath the skin now the posterior aspect posterior surface of the olecranon process as you can see is triangular in shape this triangular shape impression or the back of the olecranon process at the posterior surface of the olecranon process from here this will help out us this triangle will help out us in tracing the posterior border of the ulna i will explain shortly now we come to the coronoid process this coronoid process you can see that it is it's like helipad on a building it will have a superior aspect it will have an anterior aspect it will have a medial aspect and it will have a lateral aspect superiorly the superior aspect of the coronoid process contribute in the trochlear notch the anterior aspect of the coronoid process is roughened this is the ulnar tuberosity this ulnar tuberosity will give attachment to the brachialis muscle so always remember that radial tuberosity will give attachment to the bicep muscle and ulnar tuberosity will give attachment to the brachialis muscle of the arm now the lateral aspect of the coronoid process as you can see it has got a notch this notch is for articulation with the circumference of the head of the radius not the top of the radius top of the radius is for articulation with the capitulum the circumference of the head of the radius will articulate with the radial notch or the lateral aspect of the coronoid process to form the superior radio ulnar joint where we perform supination and pronation 
Now the lateral aspect of the coronoid process. The lateral aspect of the coronoid process is smooth and it has got a crest. This crest is known as the supinator crest. So remember the supinator crest, this will help us in tracing a border. I will explain shortly. Now the lower end of the ulna. As you can see, the lower end of the ulna is also uh, disc shaped. This is also known as the head of the ulna. It has got a sharp projection inframedially. This inframedial sharp projection is known as the stellate process of the ulna. So radius bone has got a stellate process over the lower end and ulna has got a stellate process at the lower end. The lower end of the inferiorly the lower end of the ulna is separated from the wrist joint with the disc. So here a disc is placed and then this ulna will not participate in the wrist joint. But this lower end of the ulna will articulate with the radius bone ulnar notch. Radius bone lower end has got an ulnar notch for accommodation of the lower end of the ulna. Here we will produce supination and pronation. This is the distal radio ulnar joint. Now the shaft of the ulna bone. Shaft of the ulna bone is triangular in cut section. It has got three borders and three surfaces. The borders are the lateral, anterior and posterior. The surfaces are the medial, anterior and posterior. First I will trace the borders and then surfaces are very easy to mark. From the, from the supinated crest downward we will trace the anterior border. So this is the anterior border of the ulna. This is the anterior border of the ulna. We will trace this border from the supinated crest downward. So here you can see that beneath the notch, beneath the radial notch, we have got the triangle and then the apex. So after the triangle, we've got an apex and from here downward, we will trace the sharp lateral border, the introsious border that gives attachment to the introsious membrane that is towards the radius. So this is the lateral border of the ulna bone. Now the posterior border of the ulna. This triangular surface over the back of the olecranon process, its apex will help us in tracing the posterior border because its apex downward easily marks the posterior border of the ulna bone. So here you can see that we have got the triangle over the back of the olecranon process. From triangle apex downward, we will trace the posterior border. So I will repeat. From the supinator crest downward, we will trace the anterior border. From this triangle beneath the notch, radial notch, we will trace the lateral border. And from this triangle apex downward, we will trace the posterior border of the ulna. Now the surfaces are very much easy. Between the lateral border and the anterior border, on the front we have got this anterior surface. So this is the anterior surface of the ulna bone. On the back, between the posterior border and the lateral border, this hole is the posterior surface. Now the medial surface, between the anterior border and the posterior border, medially we have got the medial surface. So between the anterior border and the posterior border, medially we have got this medial surface. There are three surfaces of the ulna bone, anterior surface on the front, posterior surface on the back and medially we have got this medial surface. Now I will quickly repeat the reciprocal landmarks. At the upper end of the radius and the ulna, we have got the proximal or superior radial nerve joint. This joint is between circumference of the head of the radius and a notch, a radial notch over the ulna. So superiorly we have got radial notch and radius has got the head circumference. Now the inferior aspect, you will note down reciprocal landmarks. At the lower end of the radius and ulna, we have got the distal or inferior radial ulnar joint. Here, radius will provide the notch. At the superior aspect, ulna has provided the notch. That was the radial notch. Here, radius will provide a notch for ulna. This is the ulnar notch over the lower end of the radius. Here, the lower end of the ulna will articulate to form the distal radial ulnar joint. 
Lastly, the shaft of the radius and the ulna bone are also reciprocal. Their borders and surfaces are reciprocal. As you can see in the cut section, radius will have a medial border towards the ulna. Radius will have an atrocious border towards the ulna and ulna will have a lateral border or the atrocious border towards the radius. Against the medial border of the radius bone, against the atrocious border of the radius bone, we will have a surface that is the lateral surface of the radius bone. Against the lateral border of the ulna bone, we will have a medial surface. Against the atrocious border of the ulna bone, we will have a medial surface. Rest is same in both the bones. Both the bones has got anterior border, both the bone has got posterior border, both the bone has got the anterior surface, both the bones has got posterior surface. So always remember the odd one. The odd one is that the radial bone has got a medial border and a lateral surface and ulna bone has got a lateral border and a medial surface. For side determination, always remember a simple rule. You have to mention only three points. Now the side determination of the radius bone. For superior and inferior, we can easily say that this is the lower end of the radius bone. For anterior and posterior, we can easily mark that posteriorly the lower end has got tubercles. So we have determined the inferior aspect and the posterior aspect. For the lateral or the medial aspect, we can say that radius lower end has got a notch. This notch is the ulnar notch that is located medially. In this way, we will determine this bone belongs to right side or the left side. Likewise in ulna, we have to mention three points, one superior and inferior, one anterior or posterior, one medial or lateral. So we can easily mark that this is the upper end of the ulna with the olecranoid process and with the coronoid process. For front back, we will say that this notch is on the front. This is the trochlear notch. For medial and lateral, we can say that this is the radial notch that is present laterally. So with the help of these three points, superiorly we have got olecranoid process, interiorly we have got the notch and laterally we have got this radial notch, we can determine this ulna belongs to right side or the left side. So this is all about radius and ulna.